Hey guys, welcome to the Captain Says and Mask Guy Show. We are actually joined by the same ones we videotaped yesterday at FanQuest, the, what was it called, uh, <laughs> the Canadian Showcase. Uh, the, the Great White Northern there we go. Tune Showcase. Yeah, basically, <laughs> thank you, Scatter Powder. <laughs> uh, that's one thing I should have actually written down today. Um, so, you all have different names. Um, I think you guys are just Dan and Vince. I go by Slurp Dan. And I go, I go by Pegboat. Okay, Lazy Nerd, as well as... Scatter Powder. A lot of names to remember. <laughs> and of course, the guy behind the camera here on Facebook Live is that Mask Guy. Uh, so, great to have you guys we'll on. I'm going to try to keep my fingers out of the way of my camera as much as possible. So we'll start with the questions. Um, obviously, the biggest question is what does chip tuning mean to you? So we will start with Scatter and kind of work our way down the table. Uh, I'm totally not like sharing the live stream and having. <laughs> Sorry about that. Definitely okay with that. So what is chip tuning in your own definition? It's pretty open ended. Like that's a, that's well, when we first read the question, we all kind of laughed. Oh, that old question, because yeah, it's different for everybody. Kind of, I don't know. So, like, if you want chip tuning, is like most old devices, well, most devices in general have a sound chip, and then so like we use Game Boys, and you just learn learn a program that uses a sound chip, and then you tune the chip to make fun sounds, I guess. I also, I personally use, write music for the Commodore 64. I write music for the TurboGrafx-16 slash C engine. I have experience with the NES, the Sega Genesis, the Sega Master System, list goes on. It's not It's not just, get, Game Boy is probably the most popular system to do use, I think, because how many millions of them sold, they're cheap to get still, and there's a, there's a, a really big, uh, I guess, home. there's a lot of homebrew stuff, so the carts to be able to uh, put your own programs on them and whatnot. It, it, it's kind of like a perfect storm to make the Game Boy, I guess, a popular. And I guess most people grew up with one, right? So it's nostalgic. Definitely is that. Uh, Lazy Nerd, your little insight? Um, yeah. In, in terms of actual, um, well, what wasn't covered yet was just the whole aesthetic with the uh, chiptune, just taking, you know, older devices that seem limited and then just give me, giving them new life, just... Uh, you know, working the challenges of only three or four channels of actual sound that you can stream through an actual chip, and then just creating something huge. Especially with the Game Boy, there's uh, a wave channel synthesizer in the third channel. So what you can actually do is you can write your own uh, sounds or samples with that. And uh, when you actually play back this live, you hear, you know, different things like dubstep basses, really low um, analog sounding, uh, granular type sounds, that kind of thing. I, uh, before we go any further, I just want to go off and kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of like a, a fanboy moment because I actually remember having a Game Boy, the color exactly like that one, with the clear uh, case and everything. Yeah, yeah, that was my first one too. Yeah, so, and also, I mean, I had that beast over there as well. The yeah, line, the screen the was, I should have taken it back because the screen was wrecked at me, like, lines on uh, either side. So really it's easy to repair. You just literally yeah. literally go, sorry, I'll get a thumb iron and fix your dead <laughs> pixel. Yeah, yeah and then add a, uh, add a backlight, like, yeah. uh, on this one here. Yeah, and then I just That's had, it. like, a couple of... Oh, that could save me so much still time. Have one <laughs> yeah. around somewhere. But, I mean, so, I mean, I'm feeling kind of nostalgic and I'm feeling old. I got my first Game Boy back in 19, oh my goodness, 93, I think. And I bought that at... I was born in 93. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making me feel I'm really fine. old. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really old now. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, no problem. Anytime. Yeah, fine. <laughs> no, it's good. I was on the same. Yeah, right, I was the same age as you, actually. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. What, for you, what is chip tuning in your um, own words? <coughs> Chip tuning for me is basically just taking music with old video game hardware that, and doing something with doing something with something it was never meant to do with that thing. So the Game Boy was never really meant to be a, a like digital music synthesizer or like big sounds, but you can get some really fun stuff out of it. So I think. 
think that's that's the big thing for me was yeah, just getting something to do something you never would never do. Definitely a good way to look at it. Um, so how did you guys actually get into chip tuning? We'll start that um, works back the other way. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess I just sort of found them, then decided, hey, I want to do that too, and bought myself a Game Boy and a flash cart, and just stuck with it. And for yourself? God. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm kind of a different background in the sense that like, I listen to like a more traditional chiptune uh, thing. Most of what I came from was I was interested in classic video game music on the actual from games and things. Um, early on, there's a artist called and developer called or named Hertz Devil. He was like one of the. I was like when I saw that, I was like, holy cow! Like I can make my own like uh, chip tune music. So I got into uh, writing chip tunes. I'm a bit different from these guys in the sense that I write all my on the computer. And I do a little bit of uh, Game Boy development, so I write programs for the Game Boy. Uh, most of the time I'm lazy and I'll just use someone else's sound engine or I'll use something more <laughs> inefficient. Hey, don't take my name, I'm lazy and <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I guess that's, it, it, it kind of a similar thing where I, I started re making the music um, on the computer and I was like, you know, I can go out and, I already had a Game Boy, I was like, oh, I'll just go out and buy a, a flash cart and start putting it on there, it just snowballed from there into like writing pro like hey you can write programs for it too or you can do this and that and it just snowballs into a big thing. And for yourself, lazy buddy? Ooh, do you want the long version or the short version? Whatever one you feel comfortable with. Okay, um we'll go with the semi short version. Okay, so I've actually been uh, creating music in uh, FL Studio since uh, two thousand two. And I decided it wasn't really getting me anywhere um, in the uh, eight years I've been using it. And I stumbled upon a site called uh, apc.org, or it's well known as 8-Bit Collective. And uh, from there, I actually bought a DS with a little chip tuning type program called Korg DS10. And uh, made some compositions with that for a little bit. And it was well received when I was actually uh, uploading uh, uh, tracks on the site. But then uh, I, d I stumbled upon other artists on uh, 8 -Bit Collective that were uh, producing Game Boy type music. And while I have a little bit of background in terms of uh, demo scene uh, music development, um, in terms of just working with trackers and everything, um, I have worked with a software called Open uh, MPT, which is uh, Open Mode Plug Tracker. And uh, what that does is it creates a very tiny Winamp playable um, chip tune type of music where you're using uh, samples that are only like you know 500 bytes to 2 kilobytes and then when you uh, just uh, compress it all together along with the composition code uh, what it comes out to is uh, files that were only I guess 10 to 50 kilobytes and I just wanted to know you know what makes them so small so that kind of got my uh, curiosity uh, ball rolling and then after that um, I encountered my cousin, Corset Lure, um, a couple of years back. Uh, she actually just uh, played at a huge festival called MagFest. And uh, she actually encouraged me to purchase a little sound DJ, which is what we usually use for composing on the Game Boy. And then things just go off from there. So yeah, thank you Corset Lure if you're listening to this. And for yourself? Um, well, like, for a long time I've been in noise and punk bands that collect analog synthesizers and drum machines and stuff like that. And then, um, I was just looking around on YouTube and looking through videos of different stuff. The first video that really made me go, like, what, what's happening there was, <laughs> um, 
there's I don't know if the guy still does the thing, but there was a guy called Del Del Talks or Del Talks. I don't know. He had his YouTube talk show where he just talked to an, an performer and then they play a few songs. He had the Cool Skull on. And Cool Skull, he makes people chip thrash. He's one of the chip thrash artists. He makes like really noisy aggressive music sometimes back along to it or whatever and playing lot so on his live performance he Hulk ripped his shirt and kicks his chair over and like, threw his boy at the floor and then the talk show guy's like all right you want to talk how you did that he goes get the program and just, okay I'm getting that program I'm gonna kick over chairs and yell along with the game boy this is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's awesome yeah. one of the things I list as well in terms of uh, most DJ chip tuning <laughs> That's actually a pretty good story. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, part, part of the funny thing, like everybody talks about, like, oh, I got my first Game Boy in 1993, or this happened, that happened. I, like, a lot of my game, or video game experiences are always, like, vicarious things. I didn't have a console till I was 13, and I actually didn't get my first Game Boy until I was, uh, until, like, three or four years ago. Like, I bought a Game Boy to make chip with. I actually was at my friend's house, found out about Cool Skull and all this stuff. It was like, hey, do you need that Game Boy that's in that box? He's like, no. And so I had a teal Game Boy Color in 2015, and I was making chip tunes. That's awesome. I, I do have the like, way around the <laughs> 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 we should move on. <laughs> yeah, we should. Uh, so what has been your inspiration for getting into this and continuing uh, what you've been doing? Well, like, oh, I was mentioning Cool Skull was one big thing, and then I kind of started learning about more of that are like Cool Skull. The guy, the guy, the one guy made me really get into it was Shitbird. And there's this, now the labels changed. There, were, there was Data Thrive Recordings, and there are a lot of guys that are trying to, like, the pun- it's like the punk and metal edge of chip tunes. Kind of like when you really think about it, this is DIY as hell. I'm sitting there, I'm adding parts of the Game Boy, I'm making weird stuff. This is weird fiber punk, new age stuff. So it's just this weird new type of punk. And so that kind of was getting into weird electronic music. And my plan broke up and I was like, whatever. I'm just sitting in a camper and music with a game. I have all kinds of fun. And I just kept learning about Rash 44 records and that recorded finding out about people that distort the hell out of their making stuff and kept wanting to learn more and more and then I meet people like this and yeah. Definitely awesome. Uh, lazy nerd. <clears throat> Good question. <clears throat> Got a little bit of a uh, Cumberbatch baritone going on, sorry. Um, I think we're all like that today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, inspiration. It, it depends on what you mean. Like, you know, based off the artists I listen to um, or uh, like music in the what back. What inspired you to make the, the music day, that you do? Oh, um, well, a lot of it is basically just that overall curiosity of um, just trying something new. Um, on top of that, I've uh, been quite a big synth junkie when I was using uh, FL Studio. I uh, came across uh, a folder which was called uh, Silent Phone. I've been using that to create a sound. I still use it today. But um, what I wanted to do was actually try something much more original that's never been done before. And that's when I picked up the uh, Game Boy and started uh, creating my own stuff. Musically speaking, I would say my inspiration would be a lot of dance music. I actually listen to that a lot more than, you know, other bands like Radiohead or Red Hot Chili Peppers and whatnot. So, yeah. That's awesome. And for yourself? Jeez. Like, <laughs> nowadays, I, I, um, I essentially exclusively listen to chip tunes. Um, generally... <laughs> Generally, I listen to like small guys, really, and generally people that use Game or or the Commodore 64, or whatever it happens to be. But really, I don't. I'm not too big in adding things like having more than one. Really, um, inspiration a lot from the demo scene type sounds, or just other people I listen to. I try and usually, you know, yeah, I want to try like, you know some easier kind of and listen to uh, like a technique uses. And it, it always it, if you 